it started off with a simple tweet a normal throwaway tweet that would have been ignored if it was not coming from a disgruntled employee who had run away to england to avoid courts and if he wasn't attacking his past bosses through their golden goose in public court what followed over the next 4 months amid accusations and denials ultimately led to a single fact this is the story of that fact 25th october 2021 today two new teams were to be added to the ipl after 11 years more importantly with the projected growth of the ipl and the manifold profit seen by the original eight team owners this price was tantalizing enough that even the owners of manchester united put forward a bid anybody who could afford it wanted a share of this pie but it took a grand total of 5 minutes for all those hopes to disappear the past owners of pune super giants the rpsg group put forward a bid of 7000 crores that's 2000 crores above the market estimate in the obvious media storm that followed in the explanations and observations everybody seemed to miss out a single fact a company called as cvc capital had somehow managed to defeat the overwhelming favorites adani group they had won the rights for a team in ahmedabad fate seemed ready to usher in a new chapter in ipl history all of which lasted for 24 hours nearly on the dot 24 hours 26th october 922 pm lalit modi the first commissioner of ipl dropped a tweet i guess betting companies can buy an ipl team must be a new rule apparently one qualified bidder also owns a big betting company what next does bcci not do their homework what can anti corruption do in this case now at a glimpse the problem seems obvious right if a company is directly involved in gambling then goes to own a team then they may affect the outcome of the match and earn money from the gambling but then you can also ask the question how is it okay for a betting company like dream 11 to actually sponsor the ipl and all of this when betting of all kinds are completely illegal in india in short lalit modi had kicked open a can of worms and bcci was on the receiving end well the receiving party on their side did not utter a single word but they also did not give cvc capital the letter of intent something that had been given to the rpsg group the very next day then in true bcci fashion an unnamed bcci official made a statement the formalities haven't yet been completed the bcci legal team is going through it and we are expecting them to revert us post diwali we can only decide on a new ipl franchise when the legal team reverts to us this pseudo official acceptance of the issue opened the flood gates the charge being led by lalit modi himself tweet after tweet after tweet taking direct shots at the bcci inciting the government to take action and all of this while cvc had already started approaching players they started declaring their preparations for mega auctions player strategies and even coaches and so lalit modi on one side cvc on the other and bcci caught in the crossfire still bcci didn't utter a peep till one week before the december 4 AGM meeting. When news broke, the BCCI inquiry was over, and the CVC capital issue was to be discussed in the AGM. And so turned the wheels. Come 4 December, media outlet CVC Group and even the third place Tadani Group were waiting with bated breaths for the results. The meeting started and ended with CVC Group not even being mentioned. Further news leak. BCCI was very happy with the explanation given by the CVC, but to avoid further controversy. they were starting an external probe headed by the retired supreme court judge justice k s radhakrishnan any and all decisions regarding cvc would be taken only after the probe is done hence all pending ipl procedures from player signings to mega auctions were to be put on hold thankfully the probe itself didn't last for long it took just 22 days for the result to come out the result being yes cvc owns betting companies and yes they can still own a team in ipl confusing isn't it let me explain the cvc capital is a british equity firm that operates under two distinct firms asian and european both of them independent and operating under different management the european fund mostly operates in countries where betting is completely legal furthermore it's not a big deal if a betting company wants to own a sports team hence cvc owns stakes in multiple rugby f1 and football teams that itself is not an issue there all they have to do is make sure that the betting company does not directly interfere with the sports team now compare this to the asian countries where betting is mostly illegal 
So, to avoid legal entanglements, the Asian fund of CVC doesn't own a single betting company. And because of the autonomous nature of its functioning, the Asian fund can be allowed to own a team without any conflict of interest. Now, those of you asking, how does any of this matter? Because at its base, isn't betting on cricket by itself illegal? Even if they own a betting company, they can't actually bet on matches, right? Well, yes and no. Okay, let's get this straight. According to the Public Gambling Act of 1867, all forms of gambling are illegal in India. But there is one loophole. This law differentiates between games of chances and games of skill. Whereas game of chances are completely banned from betting, games of skill can be actually bet upon. Now here comes the twist. Cricket is not considered a game of skill, whereas horse racing is. Go figure. Now this is further complicated by the fact that individual states can allow exemptions to this rule. Hence gambling is allowed in Goa and Sikkim. It's a whole lot of mess. Hence, just a few years back, it led to a huge legal argument, which ultimately boiled down to a single statement. Betting on cricket is illegal, but playing on Dream 11 like apps, that is playing a fantasy game by itself that has nothing to do with cricket. So even though you are betting on a cricket game's outcome, that betting is a complete separate game from cricket itself. So although cricket is not a game of skill, this fantasy game on Dream 11 like sites is. So it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, but it is not a duck. So this is where we are today, in the murky waters of legal grey areas, with CVC finally getting its team the Gujarat Titans, Lalit Modi moving on to the next controversy, and IPL going forward as planned. But all of this still leaves behind a simple fact. Rather than treading on legal loopholes in a law made in colonial era, we need to change the gambling laws. Right now, the Indian betting market is about 15,000 crore strong, with a total of 37 crore people involved in it. This number keeps on increasing day by day with more and more digital fantasy games entering the field. This comes down to a total of 3 lakh crore rupees that can be pushed from the black market out into the open. That's not even counting how consumers can be protected from the malpractices rampant in the black market. It is a simple fact. No matter how much makeup you put on it, betting is betting is betting. And it's happening right out there in the open now. So why not bring it under a legal umbrella? Why not put all of that money to use? Thank you for watching this video. I know this is a bit of a technical video. Frankly, there were so many technical nuances that I would have loved to explain here. But rather than making it into a lecture, I have compiled a list of all those sources down in the description. Anyways, till then, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.